Hello everybody, this is George from Digital R Scope and I'll be showcasing my workflow around building patterns. So we'll start with something easy. Just uh, make a relatively small canvas and we'll make something uh, we'll start making a pattern which is 256 by 256. Uh, we can do this by rulers which I've set up to pixels. If you right click on them you can see that. Control R to show this, but uh, in CS6, uh, Photoshop has this handy gizmo that showcases uh, the size of your selection. So the shift is hold down, and I drag this out to 56. I'll just place it in the middle here and snap some rulers to it. You can obviously make new rulers by right clicking um, uh, by right clicking by view uh, new guide. So you can specify here 256 and it will start 256 from here to here. We can see it. But this is a bit more tedious and recently Photoshop snaps are running very smoothly. So, I'll also be needing some rulers to snap right in the middle of my selection. So, you see how they snap? That's great. Okay, now I don't need my selection anymore. I'll just make a new layer and leave background as it is. So, we'll make like a circle based pattern uh, just to showcase uh, our. Uh, some basic principles so let's go to elliptical marquee tool we won't be making ellipses but rather circles so again if we press shift we constrain our selection to circle and we'll try to start from this middle it will automatically snap to it holding shift and then alt key together will make it uh, alt makes it Start from the the point where you where you placed your cursor and shift makes it a circle. So you see it snaps flawlessly to the rulers. So that's great. So I'll just uh, give it like a stroke. Um, so shift F5 uh, is fail. Right click is uh, stroke. So I'll go with stroke for this pattern and. I don't know, let's say 12 pixels. Oh, maybe I can make it make it larger, 15. Say 16. Okay. There you go. So I just made a circle. I can like go in a hundred percent and and view view what I've got. Okay. I'm using hotkeys like uh, Control Space and alt to zoom out just control space to zoom in um, okay so now what i want to do is make like some little circles uh, from uh, from the corners so they're tangent one to another so i'll just do the same thing i start clicking from somewhere in the middle in the cross and then hold alt and shift together. So I just go as much as I see fit, say like this. I'll make this in a, in a new layer and again stroke. I'll keep it 16. Okay. So all I have to do now get back to my typical marquee tool and um, I have to keep in mind the basic principle around building patterns. A pattern, if you want it to be tileable, that is, and most patterns are, has to be, t has to be tileable uh, either on one direction, say horizontal or vertical, or both. Most patterns are uh, tileable on, on both directions, which makes more sense since they're used to like fill out a canvas. So that's what we'll do. So what this means is that all these pixels 
from this side from here have to match up with the pixels from this side and all the pixels from the bottom side has to match have to match up with the pixel from the top side so how do you come about this well in my case i can already envision the pattern i want it like to have circles all around the corners i can actually like mimic the pattern behavior by snapping this geometry here i am um, pressing control and alt and click and drag to clone a circle right so let me take this smaller one okay so i want something like this okay and then again with some big circles here here yeah so something like this okay so in this case this will be my my base uh, tile which will practically be repeated over and over and over and over again so I'll just undo everything because I was a bit sloppy and you can't always trust Photoshop and his snaps so what I need here is like this part it's it's obvious right I need this part because this one the tile over here is the tile in here and this side should be this side so I just I repeat that I make like a broad selection here control and out key to clone this I can release now any any key from the keyboard and I have made my selection now in this area I'll need like the opposite corner it will automatically snap if you want to make sure it, it snaps properly you can always like zoom in on it and check that out okay so that's it this is how you make a really simple pattern I can now like delete these pixels and now I have to actually make this a pattern a pattern files are uh, .pat files they have pat as an extension from pattern obviously and they can store uh, transparency and color unlike brushes for instance when when you make a brush preset you can't record color it will automatically grayscale so i want to keep usually you'd want uh, to have transparency uh, in your patterns to have them more flexible it obviously depends on uh, on the use of it in this case I'll, I'll make it transparent what you have to keep in mind is with patterns it will like copy everything it sees in the canvas so if I leave my background on it will copy that as well and it will have like white pixels uh, recorded in my in my um, pattern and I obviously don't want that in my case at least so I uh, hide the background layer I don't need to be on one layer or another it's irrelevant I made my selection I can double check it to make sure it's okay and I go to edit define pattern and that's it I give it a name let's say circles and click OK now we've made a pattern but where is it and how can we use it well you can use a pattern in many ways well, not necessarily many but two are most common but I only use a pattern in one uh, way 
and I think it's it's the most flexible and it's the only way you should uh, really concern yourself with. So first, let's get rid of all these uh, rulers. To to move a ruler, you have to like press Control when you run on marquee, and you can move it. And if you move it up or to the side, it will move out. But you can also go to view clear guides. Okay, so the way I'm using patterns is by uh, layer styles. So let me make the background layer a, a regular layer by double clicking on it. Now I double click again anywhere outside the text field and I choose, I get into this like contextual menu layer style where you can do many things uh, with your layers including overlaying a pattern so when you click pattern overlay it will automatically overlay it with some pattern which you can find in here and you're always uh, any pattern you define gets added to your current pattern list and as as on the last uh, position so here it is you see we can obviously scale it this is why I'm saying this is flexible we can scale it uh, quite a bit obviously you'll you'll notice that Photoshop you can also like scroll will this scale Photoshop will see on certain stages it will blur out probably a bit too much uh, the pattern say this is uh, decent you notice it's like 25 percent so here Photoshop is sampling every four pixels and making one out of it so that's pretty easy math but when I skip to 24 percent apparently it's a bit more complicated for him so to gauge exactly how much this is black, how much is gray, so you get this diffused look. So even though you saw me building relatively high resolution pattern at 256 pixels, that's high. Um, if you use it for like uh, small scale stuff, it's good to rescale it. Uh, rescale your patterns down uh, or make them smaller to start with so but don't rescale them with this technique just uh, rescale them the original one like from 100% and uh, get these pixels rescaled properly or rebuilding it like I said before so, but on other resolutions this this is pretty sharp. Okay, it's another couple of tricks here. If you click on this, you see you get this menu. Interesting enough, you can rescale this. So if you have many patterns, you can also append or load other patterns, say, I don't know, artist surfaces. These are predefined uh, Photoshop patterns it asks you if you want to replace the current one or append them so add them I choose this so you get them here and also by default the patterns will be will be like small thumbnails like this pretty hard to see so you can always like click on this settings uh, icon and choose large thumbnails so you can actually notice something there so that's it. This is my pattern. You can choose any other. Just click out and go. Okay. So this was like a really simple pattern. And uh, what we learned from this is that for your pattern, it doesn't matter where exactly it is, like your selection, it just has. To have all the pixels from this side to match the pixels from this other side. So clearly my selection now is wrong, but I could have made this pattern like this. You see, from like from the middle of the bigger circles. And actually, if I have 
the rectangle selection it should be okay anyway so as long as my selection is okay like this this is a, a working pattern because you see all these pixels here like match up with the ones uh, from the other side say here I am like this here I am like this so that's that's like the basic principle of making a part uh, a pattern and then it's just a matter of making a selection going to edit define pattern so now what I'm gonna do is show you how to make a more complex pattern this is like an obvious uh, rectangular based um, pattern where the pattern is like a rectangle which is repeated endlessly so let me throw that to the recycle bin I'll delete these layers as well and we'll try to make something like this so this pattern is actually hexagonal based right or triangle based if you want but it's in fact hexagonal why it is hexagonal because you you can actually read like a hexagon here you see it it's like this so six side obviously in photoshop currently at least you can you can't make a hexagonal selection and call that a pattern and have like uh, hexagons uh, match up you can only have patterns that are rectangular and then they repeat uh, to, the, to the right and upwards you can't have like uh, anything else but rectangular so uh, we have to like fit that hexagon at a certain scale into into a rectangle so let me take another look at this so you see this is like the main element and it like fits onto itself it's pretty nifty uh, you can always make these lines thicker and leave this space in between you can also you can read like a cube in here a cube on its large diagonal so you can like shade one face and leave the others or shade two of them a little bit and make it more 3D you can do very interesting stuff with this so first things first I'll make an equilateral triangle which will be the basis of my hexagon so uh, to do this I'll, uh, I'll snap a ruler first make it another 256 pixels rectangle obviously you can make this whatever you want I don't know this is like gaming habit so I snap that in and I put another set of rulers here and another one in the middle so uh, I'm pretty sure you can make a hexagonal shape in Photoshop in many many ways I'll just make it using selection it's like the most intuitive thing for me obviously if you have it as a shape you can like hold click choose um, custom shape tool and select it from here also you can make it like a polygon and go for six sides but uh, there's the fun in, in having it already built right no fun in that so let's see how we can make it with selection so I'll just make a broad selection like this transform it move its pivot point here by pressing shift while free transforming either a selection or a set of pixels you constrain the rotation so I need 60 degrees so this is fine okay and I'll also extend my selection on this side okay so now I have a pretty good selection I make a new layer uh, because I don't want to mess with this one 
and Control Shift I will reverse the selection. So you see now it's just this rectangle, and if I press Control Shift I, it's like reversed. Uh, should be around here. Uh, inverse selection. Shift Control I. Okay. So now if I shift F5 and fill this with say say black I fill it like this can deselect it and really make my triangle delete this so this is what I need Control shift I delete so I have half an equilateral triangle I just clone this to the side um, and go to edit transform uh, flip horizontal and it should snap I can like double check control and arrows will like move it and it seems perfectly in order to me yeah so that's one triangle it's over here so I just I need like six right so I just control and J will duplicate uh, the layers the, the current active layers I have one two three four five control J again so now I just have to control T move this here you can also like click use this gizmo usually it's here you can click here okay again shift and rotate okay I select another layer control T shift and rotate enter select another control T for free transforming it shift and rotate perfect control T again you can notice how this is so much more fun than just making a hexagon so now I have it it's like a death star something so I'm looking again at my pattern this is actually a reference from another image so I would need like these lines to follow the, the inner lines uh, from my hexagon and just go like half half of them so first of all I will I'll set up some rulers here so I can snap to my important directions and rulers you have to know they will snap to to pixels you see this actually snaps to the bottom edge here but uh, it doesn't snap here because my currently selected layer see is, is just this one probably is, is this triangle so I need to shift and click up so I select all the layers here and control E to merge merge them all so now it should snap properly okay I can check uh -huh. apparently I've got some like gray pixels here so let me take care of this delete let me check if I have something like this no ok on this side I'll delete this ones because there so much towards white I don't think they should be there Okay, let's try again. It, it snapped perfectly this time. Also here, also here, and also here. Ah, I already have a ruler down there. So now I'll take advantage of like these pixels not being fully complete here. Let me see if they snap. They snap. It's perfect. Okay, I said I want. I want to build something like this, like my this Y shape stuff. 
we'll make it like from here to here and from here to somewhere in the middle so to make it in the middle I'll just make a selection here and I have a snap on the middle of my selection I also make a selection here and have it snapping and I also need like a horizontal selection to know where, where it intersects this line so make another ruler here and down here okay this should do for now we'll see if we need more rulers in a sec so let's make a new layer and change this color to something more pretty that will show off on our black uh, shape behind and we'll use just lines again I don't know 60 pixels yeah that seems fine so like I said I'll start from the middle so from the middle of this segment from here I can constrain this with shift you see to go in certain directions I want it horizontal and then from here I just go you see how it snaps I can move my cursor around this point and it won't move out and again like this that's it so this is my main shape I obviously need to repeat this several times over so I just control J and duplicate this layer pressing control shifts my my active tool actually in, in this tool you see so marquee with control is is this one it's move and I need this one to be in here I'll notice that it will snap which is great probably it snaps on, on this pixels here I don't know but it, it seems legit I can check it with a selection see if this is half of this and it is it's great okay and if I press hold alt and control I can uh, duplicate this automatically you'll see it will add another layer here so again I'll check because I can't be 100% sure so, yeah that's good and I need it in here as well and in here so again it should be like this yeah see it's it's perfect and also up in here once you press control and alt key and duplicate the layer you don't need to hold those keys anymore okay I'll, I'll just check it okay everything seems fine okay now I'll just duplicate this and I'm not sure should it be here now let me check this yes I should have one in here as well and another one it should be uh, you see it's hard to gauge where this where this should be uh, so let me make another ruler I'll use my selection as a tape measure and yeah this is it double check this okay so this fits perfectly in the middle okay so at this point I don't uh, longer need the rulers so I can view clear guides guides sorry not rulers these are the rulers and the blue lines these are guides so select everything here move them a bit more to the center and what I'll do now is simply I have to I have to find uh, at this point 
a selection which is rectangle it doesn't have to be a square uh, like it was before it can be any rectangular shape but it should be a shape that will have all the tiling uh, set right so at this moment I can't find that shape uh, I need to repeat this pattern a couple of times to on each directions to to see it to have uh, have my my reference rectangle right so I'll just control and G and group these together see call it I don't know zero one and now having I can select these and make them slightly less uh, opaque and now when I move all my group I can make sure it snaps my hexagon properly so that's just perfect right there and then it should come in here let me check I can't see much uh, let me check in here yeah it seems in order yeah this is correct okay and I'll also place one in here. I, I can notice that it snaps, so I'm pretty confident it's it's all good. And um, I just double checking. Okay. So at this point I should have my my marquee capable of finding something repetitive. So I'm looking Firstly, uh, on the vertical, so I see this line, right? It's the same with this one, and I can easily imagine that will be the same at this exact same distance down. So I can start. Uh, I'll start with the larger selection and just free transform it. So let's start from the bottom of this one. Let me make sure. Okay and from the bottom of it to the bottom of it so in in this way i'm making sure that see this this is inside my selection so this line right here exists and has to be continued with these lines right above it so when i look down inside my same selection it is it is just right so now I need to find uh, some landmark on the horizontal. So I can choose like this, this line right, right here. And now I have to think: if I do just this, will it be alright? Um, I can uh, can check uh, on my hypothesis. Uh, so I have just this. No, I don't think I don't think it will work. So I have this corner right here, which would be this one. No, it might work, okay. But just to be like on the safe side, I could go a little longer and go just to this one. So I'm just like a hundred percent positive right now. I don't have to bust my mind over it and to make sure this will tile properly so I just press enter I'm happy with this selection and if it turns out bad I will just check it as a pattern and then go go about it again so now I'll just select them all and ungroup them okay I just find these black ones and hide them. If I would have named them right, I could have like filtered them, but in my case, they're all there. So that's sad. You no, know, like if they had like some name um, that would have worked. So now I'm taking everything and making it 100%. Uh, opaque and also like I told you before patterns uh, 
I'm missing something. I'm missing this one. Patterns can record. Um, patterns can record opacity. So uh, I'm not sure why these aren't 100%. Uh, Visible, yeah, I missed some. Okay, so if I make this pattern as it is, it will be yellow, like this precise uh, yellow. And this may be good in some situations, most likely than not, it won't be that good. Uh, you'll usually want to have it grayscale because you can always colorize it later using multiply or screen or some color mode. So uh, I'll just make it all black. I'll make a big group with all of these. Control G and go uh, color overlay. Go black. So, like I told you before, it doesn't matter if you have effects uh, or anything applied. Uh, this will just sample everything. It will merge. All the layers as it would uh, when you save uh, a PNG file, for instance. So now I go to edit. You see, I don't have defined pattern available right now. This can happen, to my knowledge, from uh, from two in two scenarios. One, when your selection is very very big. It's not the case right now. This isn't a really big selection. And the second, it is when uh, your selection isn't, uh, say, naturally made. So you just didn't make a selection and that's it. And that's uh, probably something to do with whatever algorithms are behind the marquee, uh, marquees in Photoshop. So in my case, I'll just snap some rulers to my selection. Oh, sorry. I won't do that. And now I deselect and reselect. And go edit, and there you have it. Now it's visible. So keep this in mind and uh, make sure you have some rulers to your selection. Now define pattern. We'll call this hexa, say 01 or 16 pixels. You should name your uh, your patterns as informative as possible because uh, it's very fun to like build a, a library of them and have them uh, at hand in your project. So right now I can hide this, show my my uh, fully white layer, and let's see the pattern. Pattern overlay, and there it is. It's the last pattern. Okay. So let's see, let's make it kiss more. Yeah. So it uh, uh I'll just say okay, view clear guides. So as we can see it's perfectly patterned. And if I want for instance to see its transparency in action, all I have to do is reduce the fill. This fill Controls this, uh, this uh, the pixels from the actual layer without anything else applied to it. The effects are controlled by opacity, right? So if I keep the fill to 100%, it's all white, and I can reduce the opacity. Uh, well, the opacity will will reduce uh, everything together. So not just the effect. If I want just the pattern to be uh, less opaque, I can reduce it from here. Right? So, well, again, uh, opacity and fill are visible here. So, if I click the topmost tab, well, not the topmost, the second topmost, I can control opacity and fill. Right? And another set of uh, pretty interesting. Um, uh, options which we will not cover here. So, say I want to mess around with this pattern a bit more, uh, just an, like an easy trick. 
let's make it 25% because we know this will be sharp and it is and say I want to rotate this pattern I don't have any command in here that will allow me to rotate it I can move it like just click and drag with this window open I just click and drag around it will move but that's pretty much all I can do with it so let's say I want to warp it and not just rotate it I can't do that uh, and the best way and the most flexible way of uh, doing this however is to use smart object so what I'll do I'll make this fill to zero and I'll just make this uh, smart object right so convert to smart object I don't know if you see the entire window now it's better convert to smart object okay so now I can move it I could have done this before to have somewhat a similar effect so let me undo this a couple of times so if now I, I do this you see it has the same effect you can notice here how the thumbnails show that my white pixels I can preview them are like moving and if I rotate this the pattern won't rotate the pattern will stay the same it will resample along my pixels I press escape so let me undo that back so again I'll make this a smart object and now I can rotate okay and I can also do many many other things to it so I can say uh, make a nice perspective here press this button and you have this warping capabilities I don't know exactly what this is So maybe I don't know for your background or for something you have this this and enter. You see, and you could have done it by rasterizing the layer, uh, but this way, for instance, I don't lose in fact uh, my pattern scale. And how can I get that? Let's see, I just double click on this icon. This little pop up window will advise me that I have to save a file before it becoming active. And I can make this really small because I don't need it. This is, in fact, my smart object, right? So it's, if you want to see it, it's what I had, just that layer. So now I can go in here and choose pattern overlay and make this like bigger scale click OK control S and it will update here as well so I can also go make it much smaller say 5% OK control save and it will update in here right so when I click in here I have access to this and the best part of this is that no longer not only that I can control uh, all the parameters from the layer style I can also now add another layer style to this smart object and say do a gradient overlay of this right so which can be really really cool let's choose I don't know this and put some nicer colors in Right, so I can, which is something that would have been uh, impossible because, uh, see, if I make a new layer here, fill it up with, say, white, and choose pattern overlay. Now, I can make it like this, I can definitely not warp it around and transform it. And if I try to do a gradient overlay, I can only do it like. I have to choose something like screen to that's pretty much all the flexibility I have uh, choose a, a blending mode that will work with black and uh, 
go from here and see I can colorize it but again my options are much more limited uh, this way I'm dependent on uh, on a specific blend mode and again I cannot deform this I can simply delete part of it you know and that's pretty much it so smart objects and layer styles are really really interesting uh, to play with and you can do so much with uh, with a pattern so hoping this was a uh, very uh, helpful to you and I can only hope that you'll experiment more with building up your own patterns what you see online is definitely not more complex than what uh, what we covered today so until next time